yourself moving you need to see yourself changing the Bible says we all with open faces beholding as it were a mirror the glory of God we are changed from one level to another I prophesy this will not just be a song it is a prophetic insight that will bring you to the new levels that God has ordained for you in the name of Jesus I declare indeed your life is seeing a shift your life is seeing a change. Your career is seeing a shift. Your business is seeing a shift. Marriage, academics, relationships seeing a shift. No one is going to be stagnated. No one will be fixed at one position. I prophesy you are making moves in life. You are advancing in life. You are becoming more creative. You are becoming wiser. You are becoming stronger. Your intelligence is unquestionable. God is giving you unusual insight. God is giving you supernatural strength. You are becoming more spiritually apt. In the name of Jesus. This year 2024, your growth will be evident. Your results will be evident. It will be clear. People will practically see what God has done in your life. You will be the example of the person who entered into the fulfillment of destiny prophecy. When they say, who are those people that look like things worked for their lives in 2024? You will not be thinking, no, 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 no. Your results will be evident. I said the results will be evident. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Can you do a shout that's going to shake the whole of this roof? Can you make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Shout of praise, shout of celebration, shout of victory. Glory to Jesus. Wow. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm a blessed man. My going out and my coming in is blessed. When I sit, I am blessed. When I move, I am blessed. When I am talking, I am blessed. Every move I make, every step I take, every action, I am blessed. I am blessed. My colleagues call me blessed. My neighbors call me blessed. Everyone calls me blessed. I am blessed. Look at three blessed people around you and tell them you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Sit up in heavenly places. We have quick work to do this morning. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Words of life, words of hope. Give us strength, help us cope. In this world, wherever we'll go, ancient words will guide us. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come. We open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. I started sharing with us keys to the manifestation of destiny prophecies. And I told you that God has established a life for you already. There is something that God wants your life to look like. There is a preordained plan of God for your life. You are not a biological mistake. You are not an experiment. You are not here for trial and error. The only unfortunate thing about life is that people are not aware that God already has a plan for their lives. God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you. Not only that I knew you, I also ordained you. In other words, seated where you are right now, you are seated by somebody who is ordained for exploit. You are seated by somebody who is ordained for destiny manifestation. You are seated by somebody who is ordained to rule and to reign. Can you check your neighbor a little bit and say, I know you are ordained. Oh, tell the neighbor, I know you are ordained. Ordained to rule. Ordained to reign. Ordained to break limits. Say, neighbor, I see you as the beginning of a new order. You are the definition of wealth and greatness in your family. I believe this is the will of God concerning you. 
Yes. The will of God concerning every one of us. He said, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So it is the will of God for us to prosper. God has a plan for our lives already. God wants us to excel. God wants you to do well. God doesn't want you to end up in nobody. And I pray in the name of Jesus, everybody under the sound of my voice, uh, nobody here will end as a non-entity. Ah, you will be a voice to reckon with. Uh, I didn't hear you say a louder amen. Uh, put your hand on your chest and declare, say my glory must manifest. Uh, this year 2024, greater manifestation uh, of my glory. My voice will be heard. Uh, my name will be announced uh, in important places. Uh, my destiny will be announced uh, in places that matter. I will never be small. You will never be small. In the name of Jesus. You are a city set on a hill. You cannot be hidden. Nobody can put you in a corner. Nobody can relegate you to the background. Listen. I explained to us that God already has planned our life. He wants us to have a beautiful life. And I told you that the number one key to the manifestation of destiny prophecy is awareness and the discovery of God's preordained destiny for you in Christ and in life. All of us have a destiny in Christ. All of us have a destiny in Christ. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that God has already ordained that we should walk in them. God has ordained a good life for every one of us. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes, God has ordained it already. So you need to be aware. No matter how much God has planned, if you are not aware, you cannot enter it. Sir, I showed us last week the power of awareness. The power of awareness. And I explained that somebody can be in the house dying of hunger and not aware that there is food somewhere. Am I making sense here now? Now, that person can die in that house whereas there is food in the house. Just one problem, awareness. Many people are not aware the kind of life God wants them to live. That's why they're living below. Many people are not aware the kind of destiny that God has for them. That's why they live anything. They settle for less. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, you will never be comfortable with an average life. Ah, uh, You will never be comfortable with an ordinary life. You will never be comfortable with the life of the mediocre. You will press for greatness. You will press for greatness in the name of Jesus. So I said number one is the awareness. And I showed us the shape that you have a shape. Your spiritual gifts, your heart, your passion, your desires, your natural abilities. The different things that God has put inside of you, they are not for fancy. God put all those things so that you can do something with it. Your gifts are your pointers to your purpose and your calling. Anything God has invested inside of you, he did it because there is something he wants to achieve with it. I said that last week. Number two, I said the spirit of faith is very important. And I said that Sarah judged God faithful. So sometimes God has promised you something, but you need to hold on so that you can lay hold of that thing. Because sometimes it might look like, uh, where, where is the thing that God has promised and all that? No, the Bible says Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the promises of God through what? Unbelief. Number three, I mentioned the power of determination. How many of us were last year? Determination. You must be determined. Sir, many of life's failures are people who never knew how close they were to making it before they gave up. God forbid that after you have hit hard and just one more striking for the door to open, you say, I'm tired. Then somebody will come out and say, the person just blew instantly. It was just what you have been hitting and you got tired. You will never get tired. Today, I bring you another dimension to this. Number four key, if your destiny must open up and you walk in the reality of what God has ordained for your life, this particular key is an essential that nobody can do without. Every single person whose name is mentioned in the sands of time, every single person that has put their family name on the calendar of time and engraved their destinies so that nations after, people after, generations after will come and look at that person. There is something they discovered, the power of Knowledge. Knowledge. Write it down. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge is a constant in the equation of success that can never be taken. Nobody can underestimate the power of knowledge. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 4, the Bible says, By wisdom is a house built. Through understanding it is established. It says, Through knowledge, his rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Through knowledge, his rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Then he says, Go ahead, go ahead. Verse 5 there now. Verse 5. Put it on the screen back now. God bless you. A wise man is strong. Yes! He said a man of knowledge increases strength. If you will increase strength in life and enter the fullness of what God has planned for you, you must press for knowledge. Look at your neighbor. Say press for knowledge. Oh, you're not doing it. You're not doing it. Say press for knowledge. Sir, 90% of the people on earth are always on the other side of those who are comfortable with where they are. 
only about 10% of people are holding most of the things that life has to offer. And the secret to holding the things that life has to offer is what? Knowledge. Those of us who are in the first service, I played a video and I did a teaching and I told you three people are going to survive this present time and age that we have entered and we are moving into now. Number one, I said those who are owners of what? Capital. Those who have money, they have money, 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 money. They have capital. They are the ones that will survive. They have capital or they have access to capital. So certain people have worked so much in their life, they have capital. When you're talking about something to invest in, they have some money to drop there. They have something to drop here. They have something to drop here. The next are those who have access, like banks, insurance organizations. These people have access to money that people give to them to trade for them for one reason or the other. So they have access to capital. Those people will thrive in this dispensation. Number two set of people that will thrive in this dispensation are those who are doing something with tech and the media space. They will thrive in this dispensation because that is the dispensation that we find ourselves in. Number three set of people that will try in this expression are those people who know how to use deep work to press and provide solution at an elite level with both speed and quantity. They have the wisdom, they have the intelligence, and they use deep work. They, they, they stretch their brain so that their boss sees them and says, ah, we can't do anything about this person, just leave this guy. If you take a step and you're about to say, no, no, retain that person. Yeah, this kind of Next week, I'll talk about this kind of people very soon. But a little bit about something that brings you to that level is knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, God says, God's divine power has given all things that pertains to life and what? Godliness. How? He says, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. How do we get divine power that pertains to life and godliness? Through the knowledge of him. In other words, you can be a Christian and remain a pauper struggling if you don't know him. That's why one day Paul rose up and he said, no, 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 this is not enough. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. Before that time, Paul said, I do not count myself to have apprehended, not as if I have achieved or attained anything. He said, this one thing I do, I press forward towards the mark of the price of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. I want to know him more. Why? Because the more of God, Paul realized that the more of God he knows, the insight, the revelation of who himself is supposed to be in Christ. So you cannot know who you are until you really know God. If you don't know Jesus, you can't know who you are. Because we are supposed to model after him. How will you model after a person you don't know? Knowledge. So you start searching. There's a body of knowledge you need to press into. If you want to I excel spiritually, there's a body of knowledge you need to press into. Somebody say knowledge. That's why every time you carry your Bible and you want to study, the devil will never allow you. The devil will do everything he can to stop you from reading the Bible. The devil will do everything he can to stop you from studying and becoming something exceptional because he's scared of the power of knowledge. That's why they say knowledge is light. Knowledge is what? Light. There is darkness everywhere, but those who carry light, they will shine forth. You cannot hide a man of knowledge. You cannot hide a man of intelligence. Are you getting what I'm saying now? A man who has been able to acquire a particular body of knowledge in a particular field, a particular area, has become the master. Sir, that person, it is easier to press into anything God has called you to do. Am I communicating? Is anybody getting what I'm saying this morning? Yes. So God's divine power has given us all that pertains to life and godliness, but it will come through knowing Jesus. That's why the Bible says this is eternal life. What is it? He said that they might know him. Kai. So knowledge of Jesus is eternal life. It means that those who do not know him, they are eternally damned. Those who, do you know what has secured your salvation today is knowledge. When we go to people say, have you known Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? The knowledge of him can deliver you so that you will not perish in hell. Somebody say knowledge. Knowledge. That's why the Bible says, how would they hear without a preacher? He said, in order to deliver them, the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world so that the knowledge will be passed and the knowledge of God will fill the whole face of the earth in the last days as the waters cover the sea. So wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Stability of our times. In other words, your life will be flexible and shaky. You will not be sure whether you can secure your job in that company if you lack knowledge. You will not be sure whether you can secure your business because somebody else is coming with a superior knowledge and they will knock out what you think you have. So you must press. Tell your neighbor, press. Oh, no, 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 no. Tell your neighbor, press. 
That means that knowledge is superior. How can you enter the reality that God has ordained for you when you don't even know it? How can you become all that God has said you will become when you are not even aware of it? Daniel chapter 11 verse 32b, he said, they that do know their God, they that know their God, they that know their God. So what made them strong? The knowledge of their God. What gave them audacity? The knowledge of their God. What gave them boldness? The knowledge of their God. They that know their God. What of those who do not know their God? They are cowards. They are begging, running from one prayer mountain to the other. Pastors giving them grass to eat. And they say they are Christians. Madness everywhere. Because people don't even know who they are. So somebody can sit down under a space where somebody is literally, in the name of preaching, intimidating and messing your life up. And when you leave the service, you feel so demeaned. And they say that, ah, it's church. That's not church. We are called to exhort, to encourage, to charge up, to build up people. Listen, you cannot be hearing these things and be small. Never. You are designed for a quality of life. Yes, that's what church is supposed to be. Discipline, yes. Instruction, yes. The Bible says all scripture is given for correction, for instruction, for discipline, in righteousness, that the man of God might be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Every good work, it is the word of God that is given. Am I communicating this morning? Is somebody getting what I'm saying this morning? Please listen to me because I have something that will unlock a deep dimension of desire to press and become what God has called you to become. You will never miss out. You will never stop where you are. You will press into higher dimensions. In Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, he said, my people are destroyed because of lack of word knowledge. In other words, it doesn't matter. God can just sit down and be watching like this. There's nothing God can do to people who have rejected knowledge. Look at this. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. Kai, that is why you see generations recycling poverty, knowledge, problem. You see one person starts from this point and he could not finish. Another person comes and he's saying he's following the same old pattern. Nobody is asking questions. What went wrong? Why did they end up like this? What happened to my father and my mother? Why was their marriage like this? What happened to my brother? Why did it end like this? What happened to the past generation? It is the knowledge of what went wrong that you used to correct and generate something different. You cannot be doing the same thing over and over and accept a different result. The template is wrong. The result will be wrong. If I pick one mode and I decide to make all the blocks in this compound, any error in that mode will reflect on all the blocks. Any error in that mode will reflect on all the blocks. Many of us are from families where they have serious error, background error, recycled ignorance. Things are not clear. And somebody is buying into it. He said, that's what my mommy said. That's what I would do. How much does your mother know? That's what my father said. That's what I would do. How much does your father know? Today, my mom still calls me and asks me from things. She, before, before I was born, she was children's church teacher. She was everything in church. Today, now, she will call me and ask me questions from the Bible. Why? The glory of the latter will be greater than the former. One time, they held our hands and they were taking us. A time comes where they are old and knowledge has increased from here. We will hold their hands and assist them now. And that's why in every area, only those older people who are still pressing for knowledge will remain relevant. Go and check the world all over today. Some of the top CEOs all over the world, they are between 45 and 50. 45. And the age is even dropping itself somehow. Knowledge. By the power of knowledge. Is anybody getting what I'm saying here now? Ask your neighbor, how much do you know? Yes. Every prophetic word over your life itself is knowledge. Now that you are aware of the prophetic word, what will you do with it? Knowing what God has called you to do is number one. How to go about it is number two. How do I go about it? God has told you that you'll be a voice in relationship, helping, hurting people, marriages that are bad and everything. And you sit down in your house and you're just watching Instagram skits. You will never, ever get close to that destiny. The only way is to go and look for the knowledge in that area. And say, God, this is what you called me. You know the foolish thing about many people? When God tells them what they will become, they will start running out. As soon as God tells you what you are supposed to become, it is never a time to run out. It is the best time to go into hiding. The Bible says a man, having separated himself, intermediate with all manner of knowledge. Many people came out prematurely, and that's the reason why they were frustrated. You go ahead doing something you don't even have knowledge about. You suffer and suffer. And when you are almost 20% to the end, because you could not hold on again, you got tired and you were frustrated. If you had gathered the knowledge you needed and started pressing at least with a level, start with a level. How much do you know? How much have you acquired? You invest in a business you don't understand. Your money will finish. So everybody is opening fashion house, fashion house, fashion house. Ah, you don't need to be a fashion designer. Just open a fashion house. You need to ask the people the secret behind it. 
Some of those people that say you don't have to do it, they have little knowledge. The day the tailor misbehaves, she will sit down and just do it and step up again before I get another person. You don't have any blank knowledge. You don't know how much they sell the material. You don't know how much they sell anything. Brothers and sisters, you pick your money at the other side of the bus stop. Knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. Am I communicating this morning? Yes. So it doesn't matter what God has told you, knowledge. There's a body of spiritual knowledge. There's a body of knowledge for your career, knowledge for your business. Different areas. God wants us to be balanced all around. All around. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Is anybody here what I'm saying here? Yes. Why are we here? Because God has called us to be here to acquire certain dimensions, to press. To press. To press. You have to press. Somebody say press well. You are wearing both straight. Your destiny is not straight. Why? Why? Go and keep it and say, brain, wake up, wake up. Or you, 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 you. Put something inside. You cannot, you cannot wear that kind of amount of wig on your head and there's nothing in that head. It's wickedness. You are carrying too much of load. Put something on the head. Tell your neighbor, put something there. Say, when I leave this service, I will go and load myself. It is a tell your neighbor, when I leave this service, I will start a journey of loading myself. And some of us who have started say, I will press more. I will be a lifelong learner all the days of my life. Kai, that's how you're supposed to be. That's how God wants us to be. That is how we will have dominion. We will not be able to dominate. You cannot dominate a sphere, an area of influence you don't have knowledge about. You cannot. You say you cannot. You can, I'm telling you the truth. How far can a person go when the person is ignorant? No. Are we here together, church? Is anybody learning what I'm saying? So it is knowledge and revelation that gives light and weight to your intercession. You enter the place of prayer. What are you supposed to be praying? Pray the word of God. Pray knowledge. What do you know? You cannot just go there and say, God, oh God, I'm tired, God. God, help me, help me, help you to do what? You know, people just get there and they're just doing many, many things. It doesn't make sense. You go there and say, God, when you say, help me, uh -huh. your word says that you are the help of the helpless. You are the present help in times of trouble. And now I am in trouble. Lord, help me. Can you say, help me, help me. For what? Help you fix your eyelashes? Help you fix your wig? Help you cut your hair? For what? Tell us. He says, come now, let us reason together. In other words, God says that you are, I have put an ability in you where your brain and the frequency of your reasoning, you can match my own. Come, let's talk together. He said, bring your strong reason. Bring the proofs that you have. Let's argue it out. In other words, God is saying there's so much in you you don't even know. Let's argue it out. Is anybody getting what I'm saying this morning? Are you being blessed already this morning? Luke chapter 19, verse 41. I want to share a few things. I want to share two principles in this service before we close. Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Are you there? As he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it. Two times Jesus Christ wept in the Bible. Number one, at the tomb of Lazarus. Number two here. Now, as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it. Why, why, why? Let's go now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He says, saying, if they had known. Amplified classic, please. If they had known. Amplified classic. Start again from 41. Everybody will read it together. 41, amplified classic. Go back one, one step backward. Everybody. Can we read this together? I want to go now. Uh -huh. How did Jesus Christ weep? How did Jesus Christ weep? Jesus Christ got it. At the tomb of Lazarus, the Bible says Jesus wept. I believe at the tomb of Lazarus, he was like, ah. But when Jesus Christ saw the level of ignorance of this, people, he said, ah, ah, Father, ah. The Bible says audibly. If you are weeping audibly, how will you weep? Yeah. Ah. Ah. So publicly, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ lost his cool because of ignorance. He could not stand it. And what was the problem? Look at what the Bible says now. Move ahead. He said, exclaiming. See, exclaim. Can you see now? You know what an exclamation is? Ah! Kai! Hey! He now said, what would that, would that you had known personally, even at least in this your day, the thing that makes for peace? He said, you know, he said I wish you had known personally, even today, the things that would have brought peace into your life for your freedom from all the distress that you are experiencing as a result of sin and upon which your peace, your security is taken, your safety is taken, your prosperity is taken, all depends on what you had known. Knowledge. He said, but now they are here.
And Jesus wept like somebody, you would have wondered, how can Jesus be crying like this? And he cried, he cried. He said, ah, look at this guy. That means all of them were going to perish. And why would they perish? Was that for six days? Because lack of what? Knowledge. And Jesus was crying bitterly here. And verse 42, verse, 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 the next verse now. Look at what he says. He says, for a time is coming upon you when your enemies will throw you when you bank and shut you in on every side. He says, verse 44, go ahead. And to the ground, you Jerusalem, and your children within you, and they will not leave you one stone upon another, all because you did not come to progressive, progressively do what? Recognize and know and understand from observation and experience the time of your visitation. That is when God was visiting you. The time in which God showed himself gracious towards you and offered you salvation. He said, you don't even know. Jesus came to them and they were looking like grand. They could not accept him. He said he came to his home and his own received him not. As many as received him, to them he gave power. In other words, those who believed and accepted and knew him, he gave them power. These other ones were staying there and all of them would perish. And Jesus Christ was crying and saying, Kai, see how all these guys will perish. Why? Because they do not know. Knowledge is power. Tell your neighbor, knowledge is power. In Daniel chapter 1, from verse 3 to 4, the Bible says the king said they should go and look for young men that were good in knowledge, apt to learn. You cannot be a dummy and be a princess. Doesn't matter how beautiful you are. Every, if, a, if a dummy wants to be a princess, they will take her through training. So that she will not jam talk, not talk rubbish, not act in a stupid way, stupid way. There's a way to train princess. It took how many years? Esther, one full year of training. Cleansing, purification. To enter and become the queen. Esther, are you hearing what I'm saying? To enter and become the queen. Esther, they had to take them through serious training, drilling, cleansing. You cannot be a queen and have nothing in your brain. Dummies cannot reign. Can you say to yourself, I'm not a dummy. The intelligence of God is at work in my life. The wisdom of God is operational in my life. I will play my part. I will press for knowledge. Say it, I will press for knowledge. Don't just sit down there. I told them in the first service, you are watching people who have created content online. You don't have any content. Those who created the content, they don't watch the content. They create more. The only thing they see is when Instagram brings them a plaque or something, or YouTube gives them an award. But you, you stay there for four hours. If you spend four hours of your life on social media, I told them, service, and you are 75 years old, at 75, you have spent 12 and a half of your life watching social media. 12 and a half. And many people today spend more than four hours every day. I tell you the truth. The average person spends more than four hours on Instagram. You know how those guys tie you down? From Instagram to Telegram to Monogram, Telegram, until the destiny has been grammed. Everything gone. It will never be our portion. Is there anything on social media? No. But know when to shut down. Know the right things to focus on. Know what to not to focus on. Leave the things you should leave and stay with what you should stay with. Is anybody know what I'm saying here right now? Yes. Now that you have known God, now that you have known what God has called you to do, how do you go about it? How do I go about becoming everything that God has called me to be? You need to press for a certain body of knowledge. Now, in the first service I initiated, I'll share it. Gather knowledge in the following area. Number one, go and read biographies. Write it down, biographies. The secret of men is in their stories. The secret of men is in their stories. The secret of men, I started reading God's generals. I have God's general one, two, three, four, five, six. Not on soft copy, hard copy. Somebody will always supply to me anytime a new one comes out. The boy will bring it to me. He will bring it to me. And I started reading. That's why when we're preaching, I say, you know William, Jesse Moore, Maria Woodward, Etta. You say you talk about Jack Cole. You talk about A.A. Uh, Allen. We are calling plenty, plenty. Some people are calling, they look like him. Because they don't know, they are not in the field. If they are talking about business, the name they mention, do you know it? If they call things around your field and you don't know the name, you are, you are, you are not there. If they are talking something about the top people that are into business now, maybe real estate, or they are talking about um, IT world, or they are talking about banking, they are talking about medical field, science, do you know the people? If you don't know the great men there, how will you be great? Biography, they will tell you. Say, I'm tired, I cannot do it again, I'm frustrated. Go and read how many great people were almost frustrated. But they press on. One of the keys I will share with you next week will show you how to press on. Because you must press on. Tell your neighbor, I will never give up. Oh. Hey, in this life, and they will see us. Oh. Hey, no matter how, if you cannot fly, they say you should do what? If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. At least, just make sure you are moving. But I want to beg you, don't move too slow. Crawling cannot help you too much. At least walk. Because some people, they, they have all the books that you have bought. The only thing you read in the book is preface. 
introduction. That's why your life is at introduction level. Yes. If you don't enter chapters, you'll never get into them. You cannot be reading introduction of every book and expect that your life is going to get to the finish, pinnacle of the book. I hear what I'm saying now. Introduction will just give you a brief summary of everything. No. When you now enter, in the chapter one, they'll tell you principle one, principle two, principle three, principle four. You bought a book with your money, hard earned money. After buying a book with your money, you didn't read it. Why? It's wickedness. It's injustice to yourself. It's not a good thing to do. Go back to the books you have bought or go and buy. So as you're going out now, there are books there. Go and look for books. Every time you enter a relationship, they always give you a do, zero over 20. Every time you talk, you guys say, I'm not going, I'm carrying my bag. Say, come now, come now. They broke my heart. They broke your heart the first time. Broke yourself. If they broke your heart three times, there's something wrong with you and the person. Yes. If anybody ever breaks your heart three times, four times, something is wrong with you. There's something you don't know. That's why they're breaking your heart. There's something you're not aware of. Is it that you are entering with the wrong people or you enter with the right person and you're doing the wrong thing? They're breaking your heart everywhere. There's something you don't know. Did I tell you about the particular lady I finished sharing with? And after she had lost her marriage, we were sharing something. She now said, Kai, Pastor, if I had known this thing, I would never be divorced today. So I never knew that men are big on this. I didn't know men are big on this submission matter. I would never have been divorced. So what brought her there? Ignorance. Are you hear what I'm saying? Is anybody know what I'm saying? You need to be aware. There is spiritual intelligence. There's intelligence for your career, for your business, all areas of life. God wants us to be well grounded. You will never be bankrupt of knowledge. You will never live in the dark. I say you will never live in the dark. Read the biographies of people. Number two, read books on how to. There's what we call how to books. How to be a better pastor, how to be a businessman, how to grow your business, how to increase in your career, how to operate in the prophetic, how to manage social media, how to set up your own social media business, how to, how to, how to, how to. Anywhere you see how to, run after it. Because there's something they will teach you. How to be this, how to, how to be that, how to be this, how to be that. Read it. How did Jesus Christ get to know about his destiny? The Bible says, Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the books. You know what Jesus was saying? It means that, ah, I'm not coming by myself, but it is what I have read that is informing my movement. We read the other day that Jesus Christ took a scroll when they gave him the book. He opened a particular place. He knew what was written for him there. I read it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. To do it. He read it. The Bible says he read it. He gave the book back to the attendant and sat down, crossed his leg. He told all of them in the church. He said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. Why? He knew that thing was about him. What do you know about yourself? What do you know? Does anybody get what I'm saying here now? Read books. How to? Your husband said you cannot cook. Go and learn how to cook. Don't say, eh, eh, people that have money, they hire a housemaid. Can you hire? You cannot hire. Go and cook. You cannot cook rice and be putting curry inside white rice. Is, is that true? A good soup, curry and thyme. How? Anything you see inside bottle, you have to put inside the spaghetti. By the time you put it, everything is just... You now taste it, ah, ah, ah. Knowledge. See, we can give two ladies ingredients for soup and they will get different results. The difference will be the timing, the way the person puts what they should put at what time, how they allow the particular thing to cook before they added one thing or the other. Another person just comes and says, it's a goosey soup. We pour the goosey, pour the vegetable, pour the <laughs> concussion. Knowledge is important, sir. Are we here together? Yes, so you learn how to. Number three, leadership books. Leadership books will strengthen your leadership ability. Enhance your people communication. Strengthen your communication ability. I read a book and I always recommend it to every single person that comes my way. There's a book that my, 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 my what's the name again? Mike, um, John C. Maswell has on communication. Then there's a particular one by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I realized that at a particular point, I used to argue a lot. I always want to be on my right. I want to know my right. I want to know everything. I just realized that this thing doesn't work. Every time you finish arguing, two people are angry. We separate. But there's a way to win an argument without noise. Have you read books where they talk about the power of sales? Where they talk about, you know, pitching your business idea to anybody? You know, you need to read it. There's something somebody knows that you don't know. You're a hairdresser. Every time you make hair for people, they will do like this. <laughs> Why? What's the problem? Because there's something you have held, you have attached it. It's not a body. Go and learn how. I've met nurses when you go to the hospital and they inject you. You never know injection inside your body. But there are some of them. Talk about it. You are finished. In, in the hospital, by the time, let nurse Lade attend to you. The other ones will say, because they know that today, 
Your destiny will suffer for it. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Read books on people management. People management. You need to read books like that. Then financial intelligence. Business, how to establish business and sustain business. Many of our guys, listen, many of our guys that are doing business around this part of the world, especially many of our people who are doing business within this, our lava, plenty of our evil guys, they don't, they do business the same way the old generation is doing it. If you don't take care, there is a generation that is coming, they will buy all those plazas, they will drive everybody out. By knowledge. Knowledge is powerful. Knowledge is powerful. You can have a plaza and people don't need to come to any plaza very soon. Somebody will buy your plaza and turn it into a warehouse and will not have a shop and be selling everything from his house. When Alibaba opened, you know what they were telling the founder? Uh, it's not possible. Why would people come out here? When they have, why would people come here when they have an open market? Before you know it, everybody started coming there. Read it. Read it. Ask. I, I opened one and I was checking how the guy started doing it. I wanted to understand because sometimes you need to even read some things about sales and marketing to know how to get from people. Sometimes when I meet people and say, ah, Pastor, our church is not growing. Nobody's coming. I always like to say, let me come and attend your service. One, let me come to your church and see. One day I went to the church of one of the guys that told that the church is not growing. When I finished, I said, you are the one driving everybody. He said, sir, why? I said, you are the one driving everybody. I analyzed what he was saying. I analyzed the way he was going. When he was done, so I, he was doing like this. Ah. I said, that's why they can't stay. Nobody will stay like this. Because of the way you're talking. Nobody will stay. There's a way to talk. There's a way to talk. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a way. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Yes. You need to read books in that direction. This service is almost closing. Wow. 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 Relationship books. Relationship and parenting books. Relationship book, parenting and family. Relationship, parenting and family. Relationship, parenting and family. Listen, if you're in a relationship with a lady and you're here and you're not yet married, You know why? Help both of yourselves. Or else you'll fight, you'll struggle, you'll cry. Marriage and relationship is not granite, it's not bread and butter. It's not snolly wood. It's sweet, it's sweet. Sit down on the bed. Pray, honey, play. They are watching match. Play. That's not how they do marriage. Somebody's holding your hand today and they're taking you to a tasty fried chicken. When they take his taste, his untasty chicken kitchen, hard kitchen, that's what they put you inside. You'll be on that smoke, you sweat. A lady finished getting, finished getting married and she said, I, I, I thought you were going to eat out. Eat out where? <laughs> eat out is deception to get your attention. When you marry, it's eating. Eat out is once in a while. You can be eating out now. When you marry, be eating in. And who will be cooking it? You. Except you have a house, help. And if you marry the one that has a scone scone on the head. Am I helping? a better father, how to become a better mother, how not to carry the cycle of failure from one generation free from the bondage and the mindset of it. I think it is important how to break free from patterns and I talk a little bit about family. I think you need to read some of things. You need to buy books in this area. Are we here together? Second point, time will not permit us. Maybe another service, third service, I'll talk some other things there. This point is very, very powerful. Write it down. Very powerful. If you are ever going to manifest destiny prophecy and become what we are going to be number, number what? Five, discipline and focus. Discipline and focus. Discipline and focus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing that we are encompassed by so great a cloud of witness, he said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does easily beset us. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does easily beset us and run with endurance the race that is set before us. In other words, we have to discipline ourselves and lay aside certain things. Sir, there are certain things that cannot be permitted if you are going to become Esther. There are certain things that will never be permitted if you are going to become Joseph. There are certain things that your destiny will never allow if you are going to be Daniel. The Bible says, and Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. That is in the prescription of Daniel's life. They gave Samson the same prescription. He left it. If when we get to heaven, you can ask Samson. Because he eventually repented, but he didn't finish well. You will finish well. Church, I said you will finish well. Look at your neighbor. Say, pastor said you will finish well. And I believe it in the name of Jesus. Discipline is the quality of being able to behave and walk in a controlled way. It involves obeying particular rules and standards. 
quality of being able to behave discipline is possessing a sense of mission in the pursuit of purpose. a sense of mission in the pursuit of the purpose i know where i am going i cannot behave like everybody i know where i am going to i cannot do what Corinthians 9, 24. Please put it on the screen. First Corinthians 9, 24. We're going to read down to 26. It says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain. So there is a way you will run and not obtain. It is not by running. There's a way to obtain. He said, run in such a way that you will do what? Obtain. Men that many people run, but they will not obtain. Look at the next verse there. It says, Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Paul is saying, I'm not doing, I'm not fighting like beating the air. I have targets. I'm like a boxer that has targets. If a boxer is fighting, you have targets. You can't have an opponent in front of you and you're doing like this. You finish your life. If you see somebody in front of you, you know that somebody is here. When you are doing training and you are faced with your punch bag, you can be doing some other things. If you are not even careful, sometimes you push your punch bag, you push you back. Then you are now with human being that has sense, looking for your weak point. Be sober, be vigilant for the devil your adversary is going about like a rhino lion, seeking for who to devour. You have to be steadfast. That's why I say sober vigilant. Sober vigilant. Many people are never vigilant. They just do things anyhow. You have to be disciplined. Somebody say discipline. Oh, you're not saying it loud. Can you say discipline? When do you wake up? You cannot sleep and be waking up by nine o'clock. No. When did you sleep? Except if you are working overnight, you can wake up by nine o'clock. But if you are not working overnight, you slept in the night, you also slept in the day. That means you are living in a dream world. It's in your dream, you usually live your own life. Are you getting what I'm saying here now? Tell your neighbor we cannot be like that. Yes, we cannot. Indiscipline has caused a lot of people with great visions their future. It has made them sacrifice their future and their destinies. May we, have, may we not sacrifice our future on the altar of indiscipline in the name of Jesus. Many have sacrificed their destinies because of cannot delay gratification. Inability to control your appetite. Proverbs 25, verse 28. It says, a man without self-control is like a city broken into, broken into and left without walls. What happens? It becomes vulnerable. A man without self-control. A man without self-control. That's why when we're doing everything, you want to choose a business partner, choose somebody that has some self-control. You want to choose anything. Do people. Watch them. Everybody. Don't say, that is how I am. Take me the way I am. Nobody will take you the way you are. You want to kill us? If all of us do, do, say somebody take us the way we are, you see how people that post all this on your status, you are deceiving yourself. You say, the, the person that loves me will take me the way I am. Love is to accept me the way I am. No. Go and work on yourself. Don't bring, bring a body into another person's life. Take you the way you are. <laughs> it's church. It's only church who take people the way they are. In marriage, you open your eye. In business, you open your eye. You, you open your eye anywhere. You open, go and take a school the way they are and put your children there. They will take their destiny the way it is too. So you see that you open your eye. Am I making sense here now? Yes. It's only in church. Everybody come the way you are. And we trust God that everybody will begin to respond well. And even in church, not everybody has responded to treatment. This work, what will they do now? Walk, oh. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, now walk. Talking to different people at different level, with different understanding from different backgrounds, trying to merge and bring something out. Brother, if you see a pastor, doff your heart. A correct one at that. Doff your heart. It takes seriousness. It takes a lot. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here now? Because people are at different levels of their life. You don't want to offend them. I'm going to teach a sermon very soon. It's already in my heart. Wounded soldiers. How to heal hurting people, wounded soldiers. It's, it's, it's my, I'm, I'm working on it. There are many people who have been wounded today in the church. When they came to church, we told them. We told them. We said, please, if somebody comes to you and they want to marry you, come and see us as the pastor. They say yes. Then when they get there, the brother said, do you have to see the pastor? Until both of us confirm. He doesn't know that the, but the reason we said that is because pastor has eye and has no many people. We know the history. You know, when you go to hospital, you have history. <laughs> We're able to tell you that, wait, oh, wait, oh, this person, 
already has somebody. Leave them. They are okay. You now embarrass yourself. When you now get there, the person now say, you are not I'm in love, I'm in love. You say, the person now say, ah, you should have prayed very well. If you had told me, I would have told you the person is in a relationship and leave the person. If you had told me, I would have said, ah, this person, um, come back. I will call the person. I will say some things. By the time we're done, we will not say, my sister, face front. But by the time you don't talk, the, whenever you enter a place, observe the environment and know the protocol around. Follow it. Or else, indiscipline to just jump everywhere can destroy a person. Is anybody here with me? Yes. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, it says, But I discipline my body, and I keep it under control. That's that same place, verse 27. Paul is speaking. He said, I discipline my body, and I bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be what? A cast away, or become what? Disqualified. In other words, Paul is saying he can be thrown away, disqualified. Because of what? Indiscipline. A person can be disqualified from their destiny prophecy because of what? Indiscipline. It was indiscipline that nearly destroyed the life of David. If Second Samuel chapter 11, he just opened his eye and he saw a woman bathing outside. And before he, before he, he do you know what that thing caused David? The sword will never depart from your house. God, the prophet came and told him, he said, your children will do the same thing. On your bed, they will sleep with your wife. Kai. 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 Indiscipline. Somebody say indiscipline. It's dangerous. Yes, indiscipline. Genesis chapter 49, I'll close there. I'll tell you more about indiscipline. Next week. There are many times I'll tell you about it. Genesis 49 verse 1. You have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourself that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together here, are you sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the strength, beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. That is his prophetic destiny. Go back. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. This is Reuben's destiny. Excellency of dignity as the firstborn, he will stand out, he will be dignified, his brothers will bow to him. Do you know that the, the glory of the firstborn went to, Dave, uh, to, to, to Joseph? When the Bible says, Even Judah too took a part, he said, You, your brothers will praise. For David, he said, Your brothers will come and they will bow to you. That was what was supposed to happen to the life of Reuben. But see where the problem came. Look at the next verse now. It says, Unstable as water, you shall not exhale. Why? Because you went up to your father's bed. Then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. He said, from that day, just because of that act of indiscipline, Reuben has caused a whole generation to suffer. One day, all the children of Reuben, everything was going wrong. They were down. They were use, useless and non-entities. Then one day, Moses came and cried. He said, oh, that Reuben might live. Let him not die. Let his men not be few. Beg him on his behalf. Let Reuben live. Let him not die. Let his men not be few. Because Reuben's life was already wasted. Is anybody getting what I'm saying here now? Areas that you must be disciplined. Number one, write it down. Discipline with your finance. You are earning 50,000 naira. You are buying data, 10,000 naira. Ah, you want to kill yourself? Data, 10,000 per month. And your salary is 50,000 naira. You can't last. How much will you save? You are earning 200,000 naira and you are eating in a restaurant where they sell food, one plate for 30,000 naira and you eat there two times in a month. You are eating your future in the present already. Financial discipline. Resource management. Managing your finance. They will say you are stingy. You are not stingy. You are not stingy. Some of the richest people in the world, they don't dress the way some people who are not even rich dress. They don't. They are not bothered. Because they cannot manage some things. Buying liabilities everywhere. Financial discipline is very important. Everybody is cutting their hair where they pay 5,000 naira. How much do you salary? Cut where they pay 500 naira. It will not be different. It will look like the same thing. Sincerely, when I was cutting my hair where I pay 500 naira, and now that I cut my hair, one of our guys cuts my hair for me, I don't have to pay. It's almost the same thing. If you cut your hair in necks and you cut it in best, it will be almost the same thing. Just look for best at his low level that knows it well. Everybody must be at the level. Is it bad wrong to cut hair? No, it's not wrong. If you have what it takes, do it. But know what you're doing. Am I making sense here right now? Is anybody going to say now? Financial discipline. Financial discipline. Eat what you should eat. Buy what you should buy. Don't buy clothes that you cannot afford. You are looking at your neighbors. You don't know where they make their money from. You don't know what they do. Your neighbor sits down in the house. You don't know how many years he has been investing. Some people are not spending from their current money. They are spending from an investment. Some people have inherited things. What their father owned that they gave them as inheritance. They don't spend the money they get normally. They spend the monthly money that comes from inheritance. You are now copying them. Finished. <laughs> are we here together? You can't copy anybody like that. You say, no, no. I want to go on Instagram. <laughs> Snap empty plate. Nobody will complain. If you put the plate full, 
and you eat what you are not going to finish, and you buy, they say chicken, 3,005. It's not your birthday. We are not doing any special. And we know that you don't have plenty of money. The people that have plenty of money, they are very cautious self. Sir, rich people are very prudent. <laughs> I've seen it, I know. And do you know what? We live in a world where poor people suffer. Rich people buy in bulk, poor people buy in bits. When you buy in bits, calculate the price the person will buy in bulk. Financial management, very key. Learn how to manage finance, learn how to manage business. Go back to your businesses and cut all the excesses. If you have a, what do you call it, water dispenser in your office and you pay 1,000 naira every day, and you know that that water dispenser is the secretary alone that buys it, that drinks it, and two other people and the staff there, don't put it again, buy pure water and put it aside, close it. Except it's for other visitors and you want to set some class, put it. But if you know that we win, that we win, you know, you know the drink pure water? You that I know that you drink pure water. Put pure water inside that. But when you know that it's for visitors and you want to set the standard and class, you just do it there and you leave it. You can manage your space. Am I making sense here now? To save some cost. You have to put a certain class every time to please certain people. No. Except if you are making money from that thing and you have removed the money from that thing. If I will get the money back, I will do it. If I'm not going to get the money, I'm not going to do it. Why would I do it? It's waste. It's waste. Are you what I'm saying? It's what? Waste. Management, financial management. Don't buy it. When my data finishes, there's some time my data will finish. I say, my wife, share all spot. <laughs> my wife, too, will say, share all spot sometimes. Data has finished. The budget has expired. We wait. You cannot kill yourself. There are some people that I have more money than they buy more data than I say, by the time, so what I buy. <laughs> God. They brought a shoe to Bishop Inekwa and they told him how much. He said, Kai, will this shoe take me to heaven? <laughs> if, if the trumpet sounds, that shoe will just do, zzz, zzz, we'll go to heaven. <laughs> not now. Tell your neighbor, not now. <laughs> and if you are there already, say, I do it with wisdom. Yes, do it with wisdom. Calculate. Calculate. You calculate. Are you what I'm saying now? Discipline in the area of finances. Number two, discipline with your time. Time management. Somebody say time management. Time management. Hello? Hello, where are you there? I did my stuff. Come, 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 come. Hello, hello, you ready? I did Joshua. Come. Go everywhere. How can you be living your life like that? Time is life. Life is time. Listen, you can never do anything productive if you keep wasting up your time. Every time you waste, is life wasted. Wasted on Instagram is life wasted. Wasted gisting is life wasted. Wasted doing other things is life wasted. Is anybody get what I'm saying here right now? Don't go everywhere. You cannot go. Everywhere. Somebody's going to a birthday party. They didn't invite you. I said, I'll follow you. Why? Nobody knows you. When you even came, they didn't put you at the back. They didn't give you rice. Why? Which kind of life is this? They, a wedding. Nobody invited to the wedding. Why did you go? Why did you go? Then you got to the wedding. Then I said, Ah, so you came. Eh. Ah, why did you? Oh, sorry, sorry. Welcome. You were not needed. Anywhere you are not celebrated, don't go there. Take your time and do something important. Where nobody called you, don't be there. Sometimes when you are too accessible, you become cheap and common. You talk every nonsense about you. It shows that the person is not going somewhere to happen. Am I talking sense to somebody here? Discipline with your time. Discipline with your time. I don't buy free to air. That's what I watch in my house. Free to air. You put your go TV. What are you watching? Go TV that you don't watch. Can tell me you can watch on your phone. Do the one on phone. Do a lower subscription on your phone and leave it. In your house, we know that it's dust that's on your television. Just to impress one visitor that came one day, you know, put it. No, go and buy fast drive and put one video for the to watch. Because I don't watch it. They say, why? Well, I say, I don't really watch it. I don't spend my time here. They say, wow, that's serious. Yeah. I don't spend my time here. Sleep early. Wake up early. Sleep late. You shift the time to the right side. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? Discipline with your time. Time is life. Life is one. Give it your best shot. You will not come back here again, no. See, some of you are already old. Even if you're 25, you're becoming old. You don't know. If you are 40 here, forget it. You're an old man. Very old. Do you have a retirement plan? Or you'll be waiting for your children. Tunde, send me two naira, send me two naira. That will never be your portion. You will never live at the mercy of any child. You will never live at the mercy of anybody. Any gift you get for your children is a gift for blessing their destinies. It's not a pressure. It's not a... If you don't send it, you know I'm the one that gave birth to you. Bible says honor your father and your mother. You were not a preacher before you are told to preach. Just to get the money. It will never be a portion. Parents, yeah, listen, plan your life. Don't let anybody put you under pressure. 
children, plan your life, don't let them run under pressure. Time management is very, very key. Financial planning is very, very key. I'll talk about the area the next time. Let's close. Have you been blessed in today's service? Yeah. <laughs> so much. So much. Rise up on your feet today. Rise up. I know there's more that's found in you. I will never, ever, I will never settle for less. I know, I know, there's more that's found in you. I will never, ever, I will never settle for less. I know, I know, the more that's found in one more time, I will never ever, I will never settle for less. I know, I know, the more that's found in you, it's in you, it's in you. You're going to pray and say, Holy Spirit, strengthen me to be more disciplined than ever before. Strengthen me to be more disciplined than ever before. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray right now. Strengthen me to be more disciplined than ever before. I receive strength for self-control, self-restraint, self-restraint, delayed gratification. I receive strength. Self-control helped Daniel to secure his destiny. Said Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. Self-control secured a place for Esther in the palace because only those at that moment who were virgins would be able to get to that point. Esther would never have gotten there. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Self-control, 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 self-control. Lord help me. Self-control with my finances, self-control. With my time, sell discipline with my time. Discipline with my time, discipline with my finances, discipline with the work of my hands. Discipline. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In 20 seconds, I want you to pray. Say, God, whatever I do not know that is affecting me, reveal to me. Whatever I do not know but is affecting me negatively, reveal to me in my career in my business, in my finance, in my academics. If there is anything I'm not aware of that is affecting me by your spirit revealed to me through books, through teachings, through mentorship, through services, through trainings, reveal to me. Whatever I'm not aware of that is affecting or will affect this ministry, reveal to me the wisdom to manage it. The wisdom to manage it. Whatever will affect me. Whatever you do not know that is affecting your marriage. God, show me the book to read this year. As I go to the book stand, tell me the right one to buy. Prompt my heart to the right one to read. The knowledge in the area. Any area you are deficient. You always find that people don't favor you. People don't favor you. Go and buy it. Principle of favor. How to attract people. Buy the book and read it. The secret is there. I'm having 100 heartbreaks. Go and buy a book. How to avoid heartbreak. The red flags. My children are very hard, they are stubborn. No, no, they are not, it's not true. Go and buy how to parent children effectively in the 21st century. Millennials and Gen Z's, they are very different breeds. Alpha generation, Alpha is here. So how to manage those ones, another matter. So those of you that are not, that are just entering marriage, about to get married, you better prepare. Because there's a generation that we must do, and we must teach them the way of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayer. If you are here in this church, no matter what I teach about discipline, no matter how you discipline your money, discipline your time, if you have not disciplined yourself enough to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your journey has not started. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. If you are here in this service and you need to accept Jesus to start your journey, beautiful journey, He loves you, He cares about you. Everything we are teaching is to furnish the same so that we can be perfected. I want you to sincerely from your heart, raise your hand, I'm going to pray with you in this service, and say, I want to accept Jesus into my heart. Ten seconds prayer and your life is changed. Confidently raise your hand wherever you are right now. Say it after me, Lord Jesus, today. I come to you just the way I am. I believe in my heart that you died for me. I confess now that you are Lord, my Lord and my Savior. Have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. I receive forgiveness of sin. And I declare now, I am born again, I am saved, and I am sanctified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Put your
your hands together and celebrate Jesus' church.